Hi all, my name is Davis and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things tech. And today we are talking about teleprompters. Now teleprompters have been the somewhat open secret to my YouTube success. I've talked about them briefly on my TikTok channel and they are literally the only way that I can create videos like this one and they're something that I've been using for years. When you've got a 3000 word video to get out there, the last thing you want to do is either to try to force yourself to memorize it entirely or worse yet, not at all and just memorize a few words at a time and have to use a jump cut every three seconds like you're watching a 2009 Charlie is so cool like video. And my solution over the past 10 years or so has been to use one of these, a teleprompter. I think it's just brilliant to have. It can just read your scripts that you've written and it still looks like that you are speaking to your audience and making some sort of eye contact at the camera like normal. However, teleprompters haven't always been affordable and those which are haven't exactly been the best. The first one that I used for around five or six years is one from Prompted and I believe that it was around four hundred dollars back in the day and it was basically a large plastic tray with the beam splitter mirror roughly situated on top and you had to put it on a separate tripod so you needed another tripod in front of your camera's tripod which wasn't exactly the most elegant solution and on top of that the fabric shroud was only loosely situated on top of the camera so it would be in the way all the time and it also relies on you having an iPad, which can be quite expensive if you don't already have one. However, just having the teleprompter wasn't quite enough for my setup because after a while of getting sick of having to speak at the same monotone rate, I got myself one of these, which is an Air 10 Duo. And it basically allows you to start and stop your teleprompter at will or without your audience having to see. In my eyes, this thing was a must buy. But obviously when I moved to the UK recently, I had to leave that massive setup behind. And so I stole one of these from my brother, which is one of the cheapest teleprompters that you can buy on Amazon. And to be fair, apart from its awful build quality, it's not that bad. It just slots over your camera's lens and you pop your phone over there and that acts as the teleprompter screen. It works okay, but it does mean sacrificing your phone and obviously the display is rather small on this version. So while these solutions work at a pinch, if you feel that neither of these solutions is the most elegant, uh, which is probably the case, you can obviously buy a professional teleprompter if you really do want to avoid some of those issues. But obviously that can set you back many thousands of dollars, which is not something that most people can afford. And so basically this is a market that is ripe for change. And so when I received an email from Elgato about the prompter's announcement, I was actually begging them to send me a unit. And it's finally happened because here it is. But before I share my thoughts about it, here is a word from the sponsor of the day. Are you looking for a more discreet way to track your health? Are you tired of rather unsightly wrist-based health devices like an Apple Watch or even a Whoop band? Well, a smart ring might be what you're looking for. I've been wearing the Ultra Human Ring Air over the past few months and after the initial adjustment period, it is now one of my favorite pieces of tech. Not only is it something that you barely notice day to day because it is so light and compact, but the data that it actually provides is actually super useful. Not only does it tell me when it's the best time to have a coffee or when my idea bedtime is but it notices my increased temperature when I was sick recently so he recommended that I take a break and while he wasn't brilliant at exercise tracking when I first tested it it's getting better and better with every update and now it's also available in a gorgeous brushed titanium finish now that is the one I want now. So if you want to track your health in a more elegant way without an ongoing subscription, you can check out the Ultra Human Ring Air through the link in my bio. And using my affiliate code, you can save 10% as well. So back to the Elgato prompter. So the Elgato prompter, its positioning in the market, I'd say it's rather interesting because while it's not the cheapest thing in the world at 280 US dollars, it's not ridiculously expensive either. In fact, it's actually quite similar in price to the prompter flex teleprompter which is the most similar model to my old one that I could find now and unlike the Elgato that doesn't even come with a screen so the Elgato is definitely something that a lot of people from youtubers and even small production houses might find perfect for their needs so let's just quickly see what you get in the box 
So obviously, firstly, you do get the prompter itself, and it is made of a fairly lightweight, but relatively sturdy feeling plastic. It is quite an interesting design. Uh, the beam splitter mirror up here is actually enclosed in a black plastic case, which is not something that you always see. It's definitely better than a floppy piece of material. On the base of the system, meanwhile, is a matte finish nine inch screen, which means that it's closer to an iPad in size as opposed to my phone. So you get plenty of real estate for reading off. And if we turn the system around, we can see the back plate. By default, you have the plate for the Facecam Pro, but there are plenty of other choices included in the box if you want to attach it to a mirrorless or cinema camera lens. And they're also as kind as to include a number of setup rings for different sized lenses, which is pretty lovely. Because the system is so compact, Elgato says that you can use a lens of up to 20 millimeters in width, which is quite impressive, but also probably not very advisable, as I'm sure that is not an especially flattering focal length. Underneath the prompter, we've also got two mounting screws and it does also come with an additional attachment to help mount it securely to a mirrorless camera. Despite its inclusion, as the teleprompter is quite small and lightweight, it's not really needed, but I guess it is nice to say that the option is there and also included in the box for free. And also from what I've read online, uh, this doesn't work with every setup. So um, that isn't a large worry for me at all. And finally, you do get a USB-C to USB-A cable to connect the prompter to a computer. And yes, while I do understand that most gaming-oriented accessories still seem to use USB-A, uh, this is rather annoying for my setup. Because why Elgato will you force me to use either a third-party cable or a dongle when connecting it to my MacBook? when you could just supply the right cable in the first place. And now let's see what the prompter is like to use. Or maybe not yet, because unlike some other teleprompters that you may have used, you do need to install some software first. And first of all, because the prompter acts as a bit of a second display, you do need to download Display Link on your computer. And in addition to that, you also need Elgato's Camera Hub app. And um, while I do believe that there was a bit of a glitch that was mentioned with the earlier reviews where a Mac wouldn't recognize the prompter, I do believe that that particular problem has been fixed now because I didn't face any of those problems after updating to the latest version, which is 1.10. And while the camera hub is quite feature rich, and while it does integrate with the Stream Deck quite nicely, uh, there are quite a few obvious missing features, especially if you aren't so tied into the Elgato ecosystem. But ultimately, it makes sense if you think of this as one part of the Elgato content creator ecosystem. Inside the app, you are able to control your cameras and whether you are using your Elgato face cam or you've used the cam link to control your larger camera, you should be able to see and control them here. But as I own neither of them, I couldn't exactly test that feature for you. What I could do though was use the feature where you can connect your iPhone wirelessly and that works pretty well. But that entire tab doesn't really do much if it's the teleprompter that we want to use. To go there, we visit the third tab named prompter. And over here, you can write and edit your script, which is great. You can adjust things like the font size and even the font itself. You can change the brightness of the prompter. However, probably the most exciting part of the package is that you can use the prompter as a second display. So you can put anything in there like a web page or your colleague's face. And this might be especially useful if you want to read something like a news article or a press release, let's say, and still look straight into the audience's eyes. It would also be perfect while you're presenting a Zoom call and you want to see your colleagues' reactions as you recite a Shakespearean soliloquy seemingly without any visual aids or something. So yeah, you can put your Zoom call in there, a PowerPoint presentation or anything really. The possibilities are immense. Uh, something that Elgato are very proud of though is the fact that you can even put your Twitch chat in there. And um, I don't have Twitch, so um, I couldn't try that out either. And of course, you can just use the prompter for what it was primarily made for, the teleprompter mode. But there is a massive problem because I couldn't find a way to connect this to my AirTurn Duo Bluetooth controller. And that means that apart from changing the scroll speed manually inside the app, there's no way of controlling the speed of the text with my current setup. There's no voice tracking either, which to be fair, is not something that I like anyway, as it never really seems to work for me. And apart from using a mouse and 
clicking the play button, I guess. There's just no way to speak naturally because of this. From some internet sleuthing though, it does appear that you can use the Elgato foot pedal to control the pace of the text um, after you've connected it to Elgato Stream Deck. But if you've invested in older third-party Bluetooth controllers like me, then you are very much out of luck. So basically, please Elgato, please update the app to make this work. And because of this issue, I recommend that you use a different app. I personally like using one just called Teleprompter on the Mac App Store. And while it will cost you some money, it wasn't an egregious amount. And because with the Display Link software, you can put anything you want in that screen, I can just put that app there and use my pedal to control the screen like I would with my iPad setup. So essentially, what I'm trying to say here is that the hardware of the Elgato prompter is fantastic. You cannot find a better, more integrated or elegant teleprompter solution anywhere on the market, but the software is still missing some major features. However, due to the flexibility of the prompter software, I can make it work with my workflow by using some third-party app solutions. Another possible problem though is that I don't always have my Mac free to use as a teleprompter. Like imagine if I want to film a video review of my Mac, I would be a little bit stuck. I could find another computer perhaps, but I would just love it if I could just mirror my phone on the prompter screen, or better still, the prompter itself have some sort of Android operating system. I think that would be a great backup solution. I've seen some documentation about the ability to mirror your Android phone on the prompter but at the moment at least it doesn't seem to have been enabled yet as I couldn't get it to work. So in conclusion should you buy the Elgato prompter? Uh, if you are a content creator like me or if you are a presenter or something and you are looking for an easy to use and affordable teleprompter then this is probably the best one on the market. But obviously there are caveats. Uh, if you are going to be using this on location, it's a little bit difficult as it does need to be connected to a computer. A teleprompter that just uses a phone or iPad might be better for you in that case. Uh, the default camera hub app also isn't ready to be used for those who need to manually control the speed of their speech and don't have access to Elgato's own foot pedal. But the thing is though, that both of these problems have their workarounds and software updates are far too frequent for the prompter. So the situation might change very soon. And no other teleprompter solution that I have seen can come close to the flexibility of this thing. To be able to run any app, to see any window directly in your line of sight truly is quite amazing. I feel like that this is going to be the default teleprompter for content creators from now on and I'm going to be using this for hopefully many years to come. So if you've reached this far, thank you so much for watching the video. I would also like to thank Elgato for sending me a unit to test as well. And if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and comment any questions that you might have. And on that note, toodaloo.